Ever questioned where the wealthy spend their money? Alternatively, what do they buy with their money? Well, the majority of these extremely wealthy people own assets for alternative investments. Poor people rarely concentrate on these things, such as pricey wine, classic cars, fine art, private equity, and so forth. Rich people are thought to invest more than 50% of their wealth in such assets on average. Therefore, we're going to share some of the places the genuinely wealthy keep and invest their money in today's video. But before getting into it, if you are new to this channel, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss any of our videos. So, without further ado, let's get started. Number 11. Private and Commercial Real Estate For the very wealthy, real estate continues to be a popular investment. For more than 200 years, real estate investing has been a popular means of generating income and one of the best ways for the wealthy to accumulate and protect their wealth. Buying the primary residence and then additional apartments, typically for rental purposes, set the trend in motion. They began purchasing commercial real estate after purchasing residential property, such as office buildings, hotels, stadiums, and bridges. According to statistics, most wealthy individuals own a sizable portfolio of real estate. Additionally, wealthy people frequently favor exclusive real estate. This kind of property doesn't come up for sale very frequently. It isn't frequently used to generate large returns. This may be a historic structure. The rich are content as long as their wealth keeps its value. An old historic cottage from the 17th century won't have any appeal to the underclass. Instead, they would search for a residence where they could live, unaware that the old structure might one day present a sizable business opportunity. The wealthy also favors investing in commercial properties, like shopping centers, bridges, and so forth. They can diversify their sources of income and expand their investment portfolio in this way. Number 10. Cash and Cash Equivalents Most millionaires, if not all, are probably frugal. However, this does not imply that they lack sufficient funds. They simply have a stronger desire to accumulate wealth or to use it for important things. Although they do occasionally spend money on luxuries, on the whole, they are frugal. A large portion of the wealth of many wealthy people is kept in cash or liquid cash equivalents. In this situation, the poor do not have the luxury of carrying large amounts of cash with them. Even wealthy people have private bankers who manage their asset portfolios. This indicates that they are exempt from joining the checkout line with other customers. Did you know that millionaires typically hold up to 25% of their wealth in cash? This will make cash available as portfolio insurance and make up for the market downturn. They are also interested in financial products that are off as liquid as cash and cash equivalents. Money market funds, certificates of deposit, commercial paper, and treasury securities are a few examples of cash equivalents. Number 9. Luxury Foods Such as Rare Whiskey, Wine, and Handbags You'll be surprised to learn that wealthy people don't spend their money on pricey luxuries just because they have nothing better to do with it. Among those who have shed light on how lucrative luxury goods like Rare Whiskey can give you a fortune in returns is real estate agent Knight Frank. The latest Knight Frank Investment Index or KFLII places rare whiskey at the top, indicating that China and the larger Asia-Pacific Ultra High Net Worth Individuals or UHNWI are driving the new rare whiskey market to dizzying heights. Officially, handbags are included in the asset class. A new study claims that compared to art, handbags were a much better investment last year. 2019 saw a 5% overall return in the art market, but handbags saw a 13% increase and took the top spot. 
If you know anything about handbags, you are aware that Birkins are the ultimate prize and that only the wealthy can afford one. Give this video a thumbs up if you're enjoying it or learning something so far because you're going to love the next few points. Number 8. Gold or Silver Trade was very common in the past, especially the trade in gold. The wealthy use it as a means of payment to demonstrate their high or royal status. Little has altered. Gold has evolved into a place for the wealthy to store their money. Even though the poor would never even consider owning it, the rich continue to use gold as an asset. It makes sense because gold will always be valuable, even in times of depreciating paper money. History has repeatedly demonstrated how the wealthy have survived by merely purchasing sizable quantities of this highly sought-after metal. There is gold for everyone, which is a good thing. A person might choose to buy gold coins if they only have a small sum to invest. Wealthy people might choose to buy gold bars that they can keep in real safety in a foreign nation like Switzerland. Be aware that the wealthy don't keep a lot of gold in the US. According to current law, the US is one of the only countries in the world that has the legal authority to raid and seize safes containing golds in times of emergency. It has already happened once before, during a financial crisis under Franklin D. Roosevelt. For this reason, wealthy people make a concerted effort to keep a large portion of their wealth offshore. Gold is sought after because it is affordable and never goes out of style. However, more and more wealthy people are turning to other precious metals. Since many electronics are made of precious metals like titanium and platinum, these materials are highly prized by corporations and governments all over the world. Even though investing in these precious metals can be used in practical ways, it is less common than doing so in gold. It's not surprising that wealthy investors are starting to favor them. Number 7. Artwork or Fine Art it's not because the wealthy are in love with each image and background that they own such a large collection of fine art. They are aware of its high value. Even if you don't understand the concept of art, there will always be someone who wants to purchase fine art, and those people are aware of its value. This is a wise investment because they are not trying to haggle for every cent. On the other hand, poor people might consider art to be a waste of money that could have been used for other, more pressing needs. However, the truth is that fine art, especially sought after, limited edition pieces, has a high resale value. Many affluent people are eager to spend millions on fine art. Additionally, fine art can be included in the asset box and produce passive income. Some affluent people have amassed enough fine art to start their private galleries or rent out their pieces to renowned galleries and more money as a result. Number 6. Private Credit Private credit is a category of assets that includes loans that have been negotiated privately as well as a variety of other non-bank debt financing options. Small business loans, venture debt, consumer loans, invoice factoring, and various other types of private debt are examples. But they're not the only ones. The majority of people lack this kind of asset financing because they are ineligible for it. Rich people generally have it easier than poor people because they can back up their financial claims with a solid credit history and track record. And this one instance demonstrates how a lack of money makes everything more difficult. Number 5. Speculative Cryptocurrency The wealthy love risk. But the majority of people have not bought into this craze, especially if the risk comes with high potential rewards. There are reportedly 100,000 cryptocurrency millionaires, the majority of whom own Bitcoin, according to estimates. Because cryptocurrency requires a lot of technology to handle, maintain, and transact, the concept alone can be difficult for someone with limited resources, things to which the majority of the poor lack access. The advantage is that you do not need to stake as much to get returns. As more people look to build wealth, cryptocurrency is being recognized as a respectable investment option. 
Number 4. Rare or Vintage Cars Millions of Americans collect cars, but not the kind that the working class hangs onto, like the old cars they used to drive in their teens. The old muscle car or British Roadster you purchased when you were in college may still have a place of honor in your garage and be used for weekend road trips, but the wealthy view classic cars as more than just collectibles. They are suitable for use as investments. For less than $20,000, one can buy a restored vintage Volkswagen Beetle or an SUV door Lincoln Continental, drive them sparingly for years, and then sell them for a probably modest profit. But what about pricey 7 or 8 figure collectibles? Rich people can use them to diversify their holdings, make money, and perhaps even drive occasionally. However, they are not for everyone. The top index increased by 33.78% in 2019 and by more than 500% over the previous 10 years as a result of rising global wealth being chased after a small number of super collectible cars. Over the same time, the S&P 500 increased by 30.5%. The insurance provider Haggerty manages another database of classic cars. At the high end of the classic car market, those selling for more than $1 million, you can find relatively obscure older brands like Hispano Suiza and De La Hay, as well as names that are still well known today like Rolls Royce and Jaguar. Even manufacturers who aren't known for high end exotics can develop a cult following. Toyota's TM Stunning 2000 GT, produced from 1967 to 1970, can fetch over $1 million at auction. So why not treat yourself to an old favorite if you have some extra money? You'll eventually get paid in gold for it. Number 3. Public Companies – Stocks One or more major companies may have a controlling interest in ultra-wealthy investors. While some of them are all about simplicity, many of them hold a portfolio of just a few equity securities. They make investments in dividend-paying stocks and index funds. They enjoy the passive rental income that real estate offers just as much as they enjoy the passive income from equity securities. Simply put, they don't want to waste their time managing investments. Stocks also offer excellent diversification and low management costs. Of course, they are also interested in capital growth, but for some investors, generating current income is more important. Number 2. Private Equity and Hedge Fund You cannot invest in a hedge fund or a private equity fund unless you are a multimillionaire. As a result of its shares trading on stock exchanges, public equity is well known. Its liquidity is one of its benefits. Your stock or public equity can be easily liquidated. Contrarily, private equity funds typically receive their investments from sizable institutions like universities or pension funds. Private equity fund investors must be accredited investors with a minimum net worth of $200,000 to qualify. Already, this sum exceeds what a low-income individual might have on hand. Although organizations and individuals can be accredited investors, regulations define who qualifies. Private equity funds are exempt from some of the rules that apply to public equity funds in other areas. Some of the super-rich will invest in private equity if you are an accredited investor. Private equity and hedge funds are not the same things. Hedge funds employ a variety of strategies to produce returns for investors that are above average. Hedge funds make investments in anything that fund managers think will produce the best short-term returns. Number 1. Alternative Investments As was already mentioned, alternative investments are among the top products wealthy people buy. They might make profitable investments in fine art, pricey musical instruments, or rare books. Additionally, some extremely wealthy people have investments in intellectual property rights, such as the rights to songs or motion pictures. These are often very successful investments. As you've observed, 
the wealthy have a wide range of investment philosophies, making it challenging to draw generalizations about where they keep their money. For such people, all of the aforementioned investments are acceptable. Many people favor diversified investment portfolios because they want to lower their risk. Keep in mind that you can combine several of these investments to increase your wealth. Thanks for watching. If you're new to this channel, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell button to get updated on our latest videos. Don't forget to like this video and drop a comment. See you next time!